Dudes, hopefully you're having a wicked time up there. I can see your smiling faces. Now, when it comes to chords and playing chords on the bass, it is really, really important, no matter what style of music you're in, that you really get some basic chord chops down on the bass and understand how they're formed. Because as bass players, that is really what we do. That is our primary job, is to outline the chords. Now to do that, to outline the chords, we'd better damn well be able to hear them and understand what they sound like. So if you can't play a C major seven or an A minor or a D minor or a G seven on the instrument, it's really gonna hold your development back as a bass player and musician. So I've put together this wicked video today featuring two of the best guys in the world when it comes to playing chords on the instrument. First up is gonna be Andres Rotmostrovsky. You're gonna see some exclusive performances with Andres. You're going to see how he starts his students off when they're first starting to learn chords. I'm also gonna be teaching you some stuff and then I'm gonna hand you over to the legendary Oteil Burbridge as well and he's gonna be breaking down some of his chordal concepts today as well. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Let me know in the comments as well if you like this format video I'm just playing around and seeing what you guys dig so without further ado let's get into this week's video <laughs> If somebody's watching you and they're obviously they've got like years of work to get to where you are, but where do they start? Would you would you recommend triads. simple triads? Yeah. Just take triads and uh, you know expand them. Like for example, you take the you know uh, like an open triad of G. Yeah. First inversion over over uh, B over D and then expand it. And then you take, for example, uh, five yeah. D. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. but it's really like triads. So first of all, looking for, to be able to play all the triads of like a diatonic key mm -hmm. in all the different inversions, right? Yeah, and so the one chord keys. and then but the two chords. But you can you can start by yeah, just yeah. playing in C. Then take it to F. Also fun, you know? Yeah, yeah. So if anybody's watching this and thinking what the heck's going on, that was just C triad up the neck. Yeah. And then yeah. to the third. And then the fifth. And the fifth's in the bass, right? So yeah. that's what happened. So basically there. instead of doing C E G, I'm just taking like the second note yeah. up an octave. So I'm doing C G E. Yeah. Then I'm doing E. C, G, that's the second inversion, yeah. then G, E, C. Sorry, first inversion, and this is the second yeah. inversion. And one I know, I know, you're thinking, Scott, dude, okay, major triads, we get it, but what about the minor triads? Dudes, I have you covered. You know, obviously, there the minor triads as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then you, st uh, you know, can start uh, playing harmonies, like one, four, five, for example, one, first inversion, four, yeah. And five. Yeah. Uh, third inversion. So like C over E, F. And yeah. you can play G or G over B. Yeah. So then it's like only with, for example, you can play a lot of stuff with only C, uh, F, and G. That sounds cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, only yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. very simple triads, but. Yeah. Once you know how they work in inversions, you can play a lot of stuff. I can remember hearing, um, I can't remember what DVD it's on, or VHS, maybe I'm showing my age there. <laughs> but uh, it was like Bill Frizzell, and I, I, he took like a really simple melody, uh -huh. and then he just played the bass notes. He was just like, take the melody, just play the bass notes. And then, and just to prove how, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. how amazing it sounded. And then he said, and then you can fill in the chords. That he exactly. Just, yeah, it sounded really, yeah. just killer, killer. killer. You don't need to play big 
fat chords or reharmonizing. I mean, that's this is. A, if you add the bass notes, then you it the melody and the bass notes. Versions one four five for example. Yeah, 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 and so many, especially when you're playing inversions, it's kind of like you know yeah. years of study just that. Yeah. You know, and then I suppose you can get the inversions and then start moving the voices within the inversions, right? Right. Yeah. For example, I'm playing yeah. C over E, so E, C, and G, yeah. and I'm just you know the C scale. Yeah. You know, that gives color. Yeah. It's only like melodies on a bass and yeah. triads and a little bit of color. Like when you add a, like a tension, it's mainly for color. Yeah. So when you're doing that, um, again, just for the guys listening yeah, yeah, yeah. and watching, in terms of your chordal movements, do you have phrases that you you kind of you know you know will work? So yeah. there's like. Obviously, part of it is improvisation, but then yeah, part yeah, yeah. of it is you're you're calling on things that you mm -hmm. you know you're not doing sort of like it's not like a consistent Rubik's cube inside your mind. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Just checking. <laughs> <laughs> so you. Una veredita alegre con luz de luna o de sol, extendida como una cinta con lazos de repol. Arrebol de los geranios y sonrisas con rubor Arrebol de los claveles y las mejillas en flor Perfumada de magnolia, rosada de mañalita La veredita sonríe cuando tu piel la acaricia Y la cuculicería y la ventana se agita Cuando por esa vereda tu fina estampa pasea Fina estampa, caballero, caballero de fina estampa Un lucero que sonriera bajo un sombrero No sonriera más hermoso ni más lucero El Caballero yendo a andar, andar, luz a la cera, andar, andar How incredible is Andres? It's insane, isn't it? The guy makes me want to weep Now before we head on over to Oteil and check out what he's got to say about chords and how he views the fingerboard and it's really cool stuff moving through scales. It's gonna blow your mind and give you a ton of stuff to think about. I also want to recommend that if you look into triads and you get that down, the next thing that you wanna get your teeth stuck into is seventh chords, okay? Now that's just root, third, five, and seven. And the easiest way to get into this is just take a C major scale. Don't worry, there's a reason why I'm playing it all on one string. Check it out. And from each one of those notes of the C major scale, you want to play a chord, okay? Now, I said earlier that a seventh chord is root, third, five, and seven. I actually want you to get rid of the fifth. Check this out, okay? So, first chord would be C major seven, okay? So it's root, third, seven. Next chord, D minor seven. Next chord, E minor seven. Next chord, F major seven. Next chord, G dominant seven. A minor seven. B minor seven flat five. And then C major again. 
Now they're called closed position chords because all of that stuff that was going on was within one octave, okay? Now what happens if we want to give the chord even more clarity is that we can get the third and stick it up an octave. So instead of root three seven, we have root seven three. So the third's on top, okay? And on a four string, you can do it here. So root three seven, root three seven, root three seven, root three seven. And that's all, that's the same sequence, okay? Now, let's head on over to the amazing, the legendary Oteil Burbridge and hear him talking about how he breaks down chords and moves them through scales, modally, almost like McCoy Tiny. It's, let's check it out. Like when I got with Reggie Wooten and I, ultimately I realized what I wanted to do was what Joe Pass was doing, which is chord melody. Yeah. I wanted to play a note, you know, um, but put a chord on each note and so he yeah, was yeah. like well in chord melody the roots on the top not on the bottom i was like okay <laughs> <laughs> you know he just pulled a rug right out from under me so now i have to think totally upside down but then when i started to get that then i realized all the options for chord voicings underneath that you yeah know? and i ended up finding a stuff which to me sounds like um that Holsworth kind of sound yeah and I'm so when I the started clusters, exploring from clusters, the top yeah. down instead of the bottom up so what are you putting on the top then you're putting the root note on the top yeah, yeah. root on the so top so if I'm in E you know um, or so let's start from the, it'll be from the five yeah. like E Dorian yeah So one of them I do is, you know, ah. kind of has a more Corey Tyner sound. There's a lot of fourths in it. Yeah, yeah. But then I found some of these like. So you moving down through the Dorian there. Yeah, every note move. is in the Dorian scale. It's just yeah. on the bottom there's a major or minor second, and on the yeah. top there's a major or minor six. So you just move into the next. So you nearest. just have to mathematically, yeah. like I draw the dots out to figure. Yeah. I found this one. Yeah. And I was like, there's got to be a way to chord melody that all the way up and down. Um, in this scale yeah or if yeah, it's yeah. g you know this you could do it major minor dominant right well so, i was going to say so when you did dorian did you also work out the major, they turn the out minor. to be the same <laughs> oh because it's they just the start set, in a different start yeah different it's yeah. crazy you know for instance when you're doing this pattern there's only three or four shapes so that's let's call that shape one two same as two that's three, that's one again. Yeah, so I think it's only three, right? Yeah. So what I would change to the other shapes, but with the same top note. Yeah. So let's go to shape two. Yeah, and I was yeah, like, oh, yeah, well, that's yeah. a beautiful major. Yeah, yeah. You know? Now I have a sus, you yeah. know, if I do change the bass note, right? Or... Now let's go to shape three. Yeah, yeah. That's a nice one. And I found on every note, they're all beautiful. Ooh, Moving the voice around. That's sharp yeah, nine. Yeah, yeah. With what is that? With the uh, um, sharp five, sharp nine. I don't analyze them. Like, I don't even care, you know, a lot of times. I was going to say, sometimes are you, are you moving the voicings around and just look at it? You, you kind of know. You, you've done yeah, so there's much. certain. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. you're like, you see shapes reoccur. And like, if I've done something to one shape and I go, I wonder if I can do that over here too, like with this. Yeah, yeah. So. I'm like, I wonder, does that work here? Same shape. 
yeah, yeah. Hell yeah, it worked, you know. Yeah. Hey, thanks so much for watching, guys. Now remember, if you want to check out the full episodes that those clips were taken from, just go to scottsbasslessons.com, grab your 14-day free trial so you can get stuck in, take the entire thing for a test drive. Or if you're already a member, which a lot of you are already, Go log in and check them out. It is there for you to use. Go do it. And guys, in the comments, let me know if you like this format of video. Again, I'm just messing around with the different formats and you know being creative and seeing what cool stuff I can create for you guys. So yeah, if you'd let me know in the comments, that would be amazeballs. Now, without further ado, take it easy, and as always, I'll see you in the shed.